Hi. Today our third lesson and today we will do a color circle. It's good for both uh, to straighten up our wash technique, multi-layer wash technique, as well as for understanding of uh, different colors and the relationships uh, to each other uh, primary colors uh, and complementary colors so let's get started and before we start i will show some of my artworks if you don't know who the uh, what artist am i what watercolor am i and what i am painting so here it goes some paintings that I did in the last few years. So, okay. Let's get going. Exercise number three, the color circle. We will do this uh, exercise with uh, multi-layer wash that we previously learned uh, on my first and uh, second uh, lessons. But the main idea of uh, uh, color circle is better understanding of colors of their relationships of the primary colors like blue yellow and red and second secondary colors green violet and orange first uh, circle is uh, made from all six colors three primary and three secondary uh, that flow to each other uh, through multi-layer wash so we will understand how do they uh, react to each other and relay second circle is uh, made only uh, from three primary colors it's almost the same, but uh, not that rich. We will see it, uh, but it's possible to do it uh, completely with only three primary colors. And the inside uh, inner circle is uh, made again from six colors but in a slightly different order so that uh, opposite colors are close to uh, main colors and uh, there are some uh, sectors with opposite colors that almost neutralize each other and uh, with uh, close colors they just flow uh, beautifully to each other and here are uh, rectangles that are, are made from opposite colors so uh, we will see how do they blend uh, really uh, to each other Opposite colors uh, or complementary colors, uh, if I remember right in English, are uh, colors that neutralize each other. So you can uh, use it later in your painting just to simply uh, use uh, opposite color to slightly neutralize your two colorish uh, part of painting. And uh, the uh, central line uh, of these rectangles uh, interior must be completely uh, gray uh, or neutral. 
why this uh, all this uh, exercise is important uh, i believe each artist uh, must uh, do it at least once in his life uh, to make some muscle memory as well as when you do it you remember it and understand much better than in theory so uh, most people uh, think that uh, I understand it I, I have seen the video or I have seen the picture and it's okay but uh, when you do it you, with your hands that works much better so now we will uh, use clean water uh, as I mentioned before uh, to just clean up our paper, prepare it for our first wash. I use only clean paper. Uh, I will uh, sometimes I I, I will uh, repeat uh, some things that I uh, say in previous lessons just for better fixing it in your head. The more cleaner water you use, the better. So uh, please uh, keep that rule uh, clean and uh, strict. Use only clean water. Uh, is it distilled water or filtered and boiled water? Uh, but uh, it will not contain uh, any surprises for your painting or even exercises. Also, don't uh, don't forget to <laughs> check your brush uh, before you are doing any wash, especially a clean water wash. Uh, check if your brush is clean enough. Even I uh, always uh, that's a strict rule for me as well. I always clean my brushes after painting, but sometimes it happens. You check the brush and it's not clean so i uh, i'd have a mess here if i didn't check my brush before i start to uh, do a clean wash And uh, also, I, I have to notice that uh, my video will go without any pauses uh, in it, without any stops. But I just, just a reminder, wait for previous layer always uh, dry completely before you apply a new layer. So uh, my video will go non-stop, but uh, I really waited uh, in between the clips uh, this video made of. Uh, I waited for up to 15-20 minutes uh, between layers for them dry completely. Keep that in mind and uh, just when you finished uh, a layer, if you are doing it, it uh, while watching my video, uh, when you finished uh, the layer, pause the video, hit the stop and wait for the layer completely dry. And our first wash. 
we would made it with uh, uh, red. In my case, it's a pyrrhal red. I, it's not my uh, favorite color. Uh, I say I love uh, from the uh, Daniel Smith reds. Uh, my favorite is of course uh, pyrrhal scarlet, but it's too orange for our purpose. So uh, we will use more neutral pyrrhal red because it will work much better. It's not too purple, it's not too orange, it's just a right red. And one more reminder, always check uh, the tone uh, you have on another sheet of paper, on the spare paper, uh, to check it out if it, uh, if it has the right tone. Don't do it uh, straight to the paper you use for exercise or painting. Also, uh, you can uh, rotate your paper. Uh, that's surprisingly uh, <laughs> uh, unknown for even uh, quite experienced painters. But, uh, and uh, this is a common mistake from novices that uh, they uh, try to do it on the paper even it's uh, have an awkward uh, direction uh, and it's not uncomfortable just rotate your paper uh, to have comfortable uh, direction for your uh, brush and hand And let's go. Always uh, keep uh, our paper towel or tissue uh, to dry our brush.
all colors we are doing today uh, first layer is from the uh, next uh, colors from the left and from the right just from the border with uh, where uh, this color uh, is so first is uh, all first uh, layers are uh, around seven sectors uh, for the circle and uh, four sectors on the uh, uh, rectangular and next one would be five sectors three sectors and one sector and of course for rectangles it's three two and one I always uh, have a hard time to uh, to keep uh, my students use uh, rotate the paper. Uh, that, uh, that's the purpose why uh, I prefer to work on uh, paper stretched to the board or on the, such uh, uh, blocks of paper, uh, just to. To be quite comfortable with uh, changing direction, changing uh, uh, rotation of my paper, uh, for much, much more comfortable work, and just keep that in mind uh, that more comfortable it is for you, the better result you have. And you have always to rotate your paper uh, to get uh, most of the gravity and uh, your hand orientation. So here is the rectangle. Uh, we leave one sector completely clean and uh, first is four sectors. First wash. So now I'm waiting it to dry, but for you it will start instantly uh, the second layer. Keep that in mind, that you have to uh, stop and uh, wait for your previous layer to dry. And now we start to do a uh, second layer, uh, one sector less from all sides uh, our uh, multi-wash gradient uh, we have so here it uh so we do five sectors now
why uh, waiting for dry uh, previous layer is so important just simply because uh, previous layer uh, didn't fix them in the paper uh, in the sizing of the paper and uh, when you start too early uh, to apply the next layer you can just lift up some paint uh, while it's still wet it's uh, you will have horrible uh, spots uh, on your wash and uh, that is completely wrong wait for it always Third layer of our red sectors, uh, it's uh, three sectors uh, on the circles and two sectors on our rectangle. One more possible mistake if uh, we don't wait uh, for the previous layer to dry is even sometimes we would screw up uh, borders uh, between layers. It's just start to flow to previous layer and all that stuff. So I warn you, wait for it. 
completely dry. And the last layer, I will uh, very slightly uh, add some paint to my mix uh, to get red slightly more intense uh, on the last layer. It's uh, it's barely noticeable, but I will do that uh, for uh, better color. Maybe I have not uh, most intense red uh, uh, overall, but this exercise not about intense colors and uh, beautiful colors. It's about relationships between different colors and uh, repeating our uh, skill, uh, building up our skill in multi-layer wash. Next color is Kerbazol Violet from Daniel Smith. You can use your own uh, violets, but uh, I uh, just uh, blown away by uh, this color from Daniel Smith. Uh, uh, to be honest, I, I'm not a fan of violet color. I didn't use it uh, almost uh, no usage at all uh, in my paintings before. Uh, only maybe in exercises or when I have to do something violet, but uh, I, I didn't like it at all. But Kerbazol Violet changed the game for me completely. So uh, here I will use Kerbazol Violet as my violet and believe me, it's a beautiful color. And I started to use it uh, almost on each painting I do now. So I'm doing my mix. It was slightly more concentrated. I uh, thin it out with water and start my first wash of white. Thank you. 
uh, continue our journey uh, to the color circle, the third layer of violet, carbazole violet. And the last layer of violet. Check the mic and make sure it sounds right, boys. The next star of our show is the Taylor Blue Green Shade. It's our blue uh, for exercise. I, it's a, uh, one of the most beautiful uh, colors at all in uh, Daniel Smith uh, palette. And uh, it's a 
very good uh, color for uh, for the purpose in color circle because it's quite intense it's uh, maybe uh, it's uh, slightly warmer than expected but again uh, I just uh, it just do the job quite well for me and uh, we will use uh, I will use Z1 you can use uh, the color you have if you don't have Daniel Smith it's not a problem just uh, take the similar colors from uh, your uh, range of colors my color is uh, quite strong and uh, i have to uh, do the mix quite wise uh, well, quite gentle a lot of water once again i will uh, change orientation of my uh, paper for more comfortable work on this wash. Just look how beautiful it is. This color blew my mind. I do teach you some uh, rules and some logic uh, in this uh, color, but I believe you will do much better job uh, on uh, painting than I do here.
I believe it would be more comfortable uh, Z direction. Always remove the last bubble, uh, uh, the moist uh, bottom of your uh, layer uh, of your wash. If we will leave it, uh, above it uh, the surface will go dry much quicker and the bubble, if we will not remove it, uh, will be still wet and on the uh, border between the wet and dry there would be a lot of quite horrible artifacts so keep in mind always to keep uh, most of your uh, completed layer uh, almost uh, similar uh, don't uh, don't leave the bubbles And the last blue layer.
next I will do the orange color we will come back to the red and do the orange uh, sectors uh, now I will use spiral orange for that and we'll start to do my mix right on paper and let's go I will start from the inner circle rotate and continue on the outer circle We have orange as well here. That's our first uh, opposite colors meet.
We end up the orange with the last central sector. And the next color is yellow. I will use uh, hence the yellow deep. Slightly unpredictable, uh, slightly unusual for the color circle. But that's just because I have two yellows, and I don't like lemon yellow at all, by the way. So, I prefer to use my beautiful Hansa Yellow Deep. It's slightly warmer, but still do the trick for me. You can choose more neutral yellow. Uh, like say some cadmium or something like that uh, or do as i do uh, use a warmer uh, yellow for the purpose uh, it's for me it still looks very okayish I will start from here for not uh, for keep my uh, yellow yellow from lifting other colors. So I change direction to that just because uh, it start with clean yellow from the top. Now on the second circle with main card.
second layer once again I start from uh, green yellow to orange one more reminder each new layer only after completely drying previous layer And the last layer of yellow. And the last one, but not least, Spring Green from Daniel Smith. A very colorful, very greenish and very uh, beautiful uh, green. Uh, I choose to use it here. Maybe it's also too warm, but uh, I just like it. Simply like. Starting to mix 
our green. So this is our uh, light and uh, <laughs> and uh, funny color uh, this green. It's presented on the uh, because it's secondary color. It's uh, presented on the on outer and inner circles and on one of rectangles that left. Why I decided uh, this pigment to do the last one? Because it's lift up uh, quite easily. You know, uh, watercolor paints are not equal. They have different uh, values in, uh, say, granulation, lifting up, opacity. So uh, green is uh, most... Uh, most easy liftable uh, paints here, so I decided to do it as uh, the last.
and the time for finishing move the last layer of green and the very last layer on our exercise So now it will dry and I will uh, do my last words on exercise. So what we have finally, uh, we have uh, purpose of our exercise was uh, relationships of main colors that are red, blue and yellow with uh, secondary colors like orange, violet and green. So we clearly see that they uh, do uh, complement each other when uh, they are quite close but they kill each other when they are opposite uh, so opposite colors neutralize each other green and red uh, violet and yellow and orange and blue the uh, in theory uh, maybe <laughs> I'm not the best color chooser, but uh, this uh, for in this ex exercise uh, this line must be almost gray and neutral in color, um, but uh, it's not really. So also uh, this exercise uh, very good. Um, Good, uh, do a very good job on uh, showing uh, difference between trying to mix colors uh, from uh, less pigments or have uh, as much pigments as you can to get rich colors. You see, this color uh, circle is done from three colors or three pigments. It's almost uh, identical to this, but look at these colors, uh, at, at this uh, orange, for example, it's uh, this green, it's, uh, it cannot compete uh, with uh, pigment. So uh, more pigment you have in palette and less you mix, uh, the clearer uh, and richer you have colors on your painting. That's very important. And uh, this one also shows the same purpose as this, uh, because uh, there are secondary colors that are close to the primary colors or opposite. So we have the same opposite opposition here and the same complementary as here. So uh, that's it about uh, our third lesson. Uh, hit subscribe button, uh, like, share this video uh, as much as you can and wait for the next videos. Bye bye.